Hello guys and welcome to episode 70 of the 10 minute modeling challenge. Can you believe it? I cannot. 70 episodes. 70 Thursdays have gone past since we started this whole journey. While I've been doing these Thursday videos, I've, um, in my day job, that's uh, making a game as well. So I'm making a real-time strategy games with uh, a colleague of mine. It's uh, me and, and Christian. We're making uh, a fully-fledged multiplayer RTS game with lots of AI and lots of netcode, a lot of procedural generation. And in this game, i am uh, actually been making uh, some 3D objects, of course. Uh, well, a lot of my part there is actually programming, believe it or not. So I spend uh, maybe 80% of my time developing programming and maybe 20% is all the rest, which is uh, like graphics, 3D stuff, and the game objects and doing um, sound effects and things like that. And music, of course. But in this game, uh, we're making some uh, like RTS styled buildings or structures. And some of them are just static buildings like a, a city or a, a little town, for example. But we also have some producing buildings and that could be like factories or barracks or airports. And I thought uh, I'd give you a little uh, quick show how you can make a RTS styled building in about 10 minutes. So that's going to be the usual time limit, of course. And I'm going to do it just a little bit modular so you can animate the construction of an object like that. And I want to keep it simple because usually in RTS games, especially especially if you were to play it on a mobile, we're not making a mobile game, but then the buildings are going to be quite small. And also in our game, they're quite small regardless because you can't really zoom in too close. So you get away with the low poly objects. They'll render fast and they'll look pretty good uh, from a distance. Let's do a low poly uh, factory building or an RTS style game. <laughs> Here we go. I'm using the old palette today. I'm not using the gradient. And sometimes it's actually better to use uh, this static with fewer colors because uh, then you get a consistent look to all your objects. So you don't have loads of different shades on everything. And sometimes you can go even fewer, a lot fewer colors. In fact, you can go down to 16 colors and get that retro style. And it's quite cool when all the objects are really fitting the same palette. So I'm gonna go for the old school here, the eight by eight. So it's still 64 colors. Well, let's do that one and uh, let's get started. So screencast keys we need to enable and we're going to be off now. Hold on to your hats. Why is there no skipping? Oh yeah, there we go. Ready, steady, go. And uh, we are off, timer's off. Usually I keep the base of the building underground like this. Um, it's uh, quite good when you have uneven terrain to put it on. And then what I'm going to do is keep just a base plate here. I'll do Shift D to duplicate it. I do a lot of this and I recommend that you don't build everything into the same structure, in fact. So we'll make like a little side building here for the factory. Select this one, E to extrude this one, of course. And then Shift D to duplicate this one. And then maybe I'll uh, scale it down, scale it on the X axis. So press X to force it, scale it up again. We'll put a little side thing here, angle, E to extrude that on. So we've got two basic portions of this building. Here we can make a, like an entry. So I'll control R twice to do some loop cuts. Control R here as well and control R. And here I'll just extrude this one in. And here on the factory should we do maybe like we'll do shift D to duplicate it. S to scale it, S to scale, press Y to scale it on the Y axis. E to extrude this one up. I to inset and E to extrude it down. I usually like to make roofs like this. Shift D to duplicate that one, scale it down, scale X. Instead of just uh, working from the same object, I quite often now separate the geometry. I'm still in the same object, but I separate the geometry like this. So we'll keep this one here. Maybe we'll put Control R loop cut here. Select this one on edge select, do a little maybe thing like that. Let's put some things here as well. Shift D first, scale it up, scale on the Y axis, and we'll do similar type of uh, roof here. E to extrude, I to inset, E to extrude down. You can start to colorize this. L to select all these linked, go for a darker gray, maybe even black for the roof here, or a darker gray like this. And uh, let's put some features on it as well, like chimneys, usually on like a, uh, like a factory. So Shift D, duplicate, S scale on the X axis, Scale X axis again, and here I'll just move it into the building and E to extrude it out to here. Then I'll E to extrude this one out. Move this one in to get like a little bevel here. And let's move this one. And here I'll make that chimney. And this one I'm gonna put in our game, we've put like little uh, color accents depending if you're like, depending if you're a blue or red player. So let's just do the same here. Create this one blue, and then I'll do Shift D to duplicate this one. I'm gonna put the chimney. I'll offset this one a little bit. 
e to extrude it up, e to extrude, s to scale, e to extrude, and s to scale it down. That's the chimney. Chimney. And we'll make that one gray, a little bit lighter maybe. And here, i to inset and e to extrude down, control plus to grow the selection from down there and make that dark. This is usually how I do cavities inside there. So maybe this uh, could be as simple as this because we're going to look at, at it from a distance. So I'll copy this whole thing now, shift D to duplicate that chimney, put another one here. And let's just put the same type of accent here on this side as well. Shift D as if this was like a side building or something. So scale Z and E to extrude this one out. Maybe we'll go in a little bit over the um, building itself here. And control R to loop cut it and move this one in. And L to select it. And here's the nice thing now with the palettes. Because uh, I can go for the same blue. And in fact, I'm going to go for the same blue. So I don't lie. Let's put two accents here. Don't know why I call them accents. But like a little trims on the side of the building. There we go. And here inside, we'll do it dark. So Alt, Shift, Select there, Shift, Select that one. And again, simulate that it's a hole there. And here, Shift D, let's put some uh, accessories here as well. We've got six minutes on the clock there. Scale Z. So I'll just E to extrude this one. And let's pretend there's like some, I don't know, maybe it's like some, I don't think they have air condition here, but <laughs> Shift D, duplicate. This could be like some sort of a pipe that goes up. L to select linked there. And should we do like a ramp here? E to extrude that on. E to extrude that on down. And maybe the base plate here could be a bit darker as well. And here we could do, uh, maybe I'll do control R loop cut. Control R loop cut. We can add a little bit more geometry now. And here, here is one thing. I want to make these smaller. So scale Y, just compress them into there control r and here we'll do like could be like windows or something so i to inset alt e to extrude long face normals inwards and it creates a little bit of a, a strange thing here we can actually fix that one switch this one to vertex hold the control key as you move this line and snap it to that vertex and then do the same thing here move it and snap it to that vertex Maybe there's a better way to do this, but you can snap it to the axis of the different vertices there. Shift select these and control plus. Let's just make this slightly darker there. Control minus and then do black there, maybe. So that could be. And then here I want to have some features as well. Control R, loop cut, Alt, shift select that one for edge select. Alt E, extrude long face normals. And I also want to do something with this corner here. So 426 on the clock. Let's do some. Uh, corner stuff here. Pick this one, Shift D, duplicate, E to extrude, L to select the linked, and bring it down to there. And these are just going to be like corner trims. So we L to select the linked, and we'll make them darker as well. A bit. And L to select the linked. Let's manually put this roughly on all corners here. Shift D. These will have to be taller, I suppose. So let's move that on into there and up to there. And L to select those links, Shift D, duplicate it, Shift D to duplicate it. And this one, obviously we can't put it all the way over there, but we'll stick one here on this corner. Go in a bit under the roof. And out a bit to there. And then Shift D, maybe we'll just put one at the bottom or maybe we can even leave it like that. That looks pretty cool, I guess. A little corner beam there we could keep it like that uh maybe we'll do something with the roof a lot of maybes here so maybe shift d to duplicate it s to scale it up bring it down alt d extrude long face normals this is an old school roof on a modern building <laughs> dark and could do won't really do anything fancy here i think but here we'll put like solar panel style things so E to extrude that one, bring this one down. Control R, let's loop cut it, maybe just them times. I to inset, I to inset again to get the individual and then just do them pitch black there. And I think I'll do this whole thing brighter, so for some contrast. 
even brighter maybe. L. There we go. L to select the link to shift the duplicate it. And there's another part of the structure there. And another thing that I like to put on the top of the buildings usually is just some small little really simple objects here. So simple squares here. E to extrude. L to select linked. Go a little bit brighter. And shift D to duplicate that one. And we've got two minutes on the clock, so we can just keep working here. Let's put a little fake ground here. Shift D to duplicate this one. S to scale it up. And now I think I want to bring it down slightly. There we go. And we'll colorize this. Should we do green? Just to simulate that it was on a green plot of land. Or should we go brown? No, green it is. But right to green, maybe. And now you can, if you've got the time now, which we do, we can add a little bit more detail. Let's slant that one, maybe. And to make it consistent, I'll delete these. Instead of just trying to do the same thing, I can do the same on this one, maybe. Slant this one. And we've got 127. So L to select the link, L to select the link, Shift D to duplicate that. And here as well, we've got some time. So should we do something here? I, I like to keep the primitive style, but maybe there's something lacking in here. We can tilt this slope a little bit. Make it a little bit more interesting. And I think it's lacking something in here. So I'll also do a Shift D, duplicate the face. Move it into there. Just looked a little bit empty here. So E to extrude it. And again, I'm working with a separate piece of the geometry here. And that should be okay. Control R, Control R. Move this one into just a bit. A little bit more interesting there, maybe. We don't have any doors or entries. That's not really needed either. And we'll put one more object here. I've got 24 seconds. We can just put some a little bit more trimmings. Again, super primitive objects here. We'll see from a distance when we're done now that it should look pretty good, I think. You might not think so. But from a distance, it will look good. Maybe. <laughs> or good enough, at least. Five seconds to go. And a bit empty there, maybe. But I think we're okay. That's it. Time's up. We've made these type of buildings for the RTS game. And as they are constructed, I've uh, created a little animation for them and uh, part of the animation is that the different parts of the buildings sort of appear from the ground and it's also uh, creating like a scaffolding around the building and uh, it's got uh, an arm that moves around like a robotic arm that puts some weld sparks and I'll just show a little part of how you can animate something like that inside of Blender and one way to do it if we go to the animation tab let's get the look and feel here the same way shadow cavity you don't know what the cavity settings is it's what makes this uh, little shiny edges and stuff here we'll put those on i usually have that when i model and now that we've got that one way to do it, it would be to set let's set the timeline to maybe like 90 frames or something and we've got everything is just in one object so the first thing we need to do is separate it so i'll select the ground here p and separate that and let's rename that to ground and then let's call this one factory and now I need to select everything and do P and do by loose parts. And now it's created. All of these are separate objects now. So one way to, oh, there's the camera. So one way to do, do it is uh, to animate the different objects like this. And there's some, maybe it's one easy way to do it, but it's got some drawbacks, but I'll show you anyway. You could select all the objects. Here's a little tip as well. If you don't want to accidentally select the ground here all the time, you can go to this little filter and enable this uh, selectable. And then for the ground here, we can untick this little. Now it's impossible to select this unless you switch that one back on. And it even works if you press A to select everything, it excludes that one. It's not possible to select it intentionally or by mistake. So with all these objects now, let's press A to select all of them. And then I'm going to put on automatic keyframing here. And I'm going to go to the, let's see, we'll go to the first frame here. I'm going to sh do shift space and G, and then I'm going to move these down here. And that creates uh, a state now for all of these to be animated outside of view. And then we'll go to frame 90 here and I'll do Alt G and Alt G brings it back to brings it back to the default location. So if we were to play this one now, it'll just slide the whole building up and that's not really what we want. We want a little bit more modular. 
So one way to do that would be to go to frame 5, for example. Let's do Alt-Z so we see through. And then we'll take this base plate down here. And on frame 5, with automatic keyframing, I'm going to go Alt-G. And that brings that back to the proper location for this one. And if we were to press play now, that one will animate up from 0 or from 1 here to 5 really quick. And then you could animate up the next one. So we'll do Alt set to see through and let's put this part of the building on frame 10. I'll do Alt G on that one and that will bring it up to here. And if we press play now, Alt Z to disable see through, we see that they two, they're just popping up like this now. And what you could do to make it a little bit more interesting, if we first of all, I think I'll move this keyframe a little bit further in. So we'll go frame 10 for that one just to show you how it works. And this one will move to frame 20. Let's play that one again. And here what you could do then is, you'll see that both of them start moving at the same, well it's a bit difficult to see, but both of them start moving at the same time. And if you want them to appear at the same rate, that's uh, not so ideal. One way to do it is just to move this keyframe G to frame 10 here for this particular building. Now that one won't slide up until it starts here from frame 10. So let's press play, we'll see up here, up here. And another thing I do to exaggerate a little bit, one of the principles of animations is that you should exaggerate. And uh, one thing that I like to do then is on frame eight, for example, here, we'll do alt set again to see through. I should actually put on the screencast keys here. So on frame eight, I'm going to do alt G again, and I'm going to move it above, above, <laughs> above a little bit like this. And same thing for this second building, we'll go to frame so two, two frames before that one's finished, Alt G and move it a little bit too high and then back down. So now it does like a little dent like this, up and down. And if we play, play this back, it'll go up, up. And then you just keep doing this for all the objects. Alt Z. Uh, we could bring this one up next, for example. And remember now that we want to move this keyframe, the start keyframe to frame 20. So it starts at the same base. Otherwise, they'll gradually change their pacing. So from frame 20 here, we'll go to frame 30, Alt G, and then I'll go back two steps, Alt G again, and move it a little bit too high. And then we should really repeat that for all the objects, but this is what the animation would look like. It starts to modularly build the object. One of the downsides to doing this when you construct an, a factory like this or a structure is uh, that you'll end up with a whole bunch of different actions spread out over all the different objects. So if you're going to animate it inside of Blender, I would instead recommend that you keep everything here as one object like we did before. And then you create an armature instead like we've done with a lot of the characters. And then you do detached bones in the side of the different building parts. And you map the building parts to those bones. And then you animate those up uh, same way as you did with this one. But the benefit then is that everything is going to be inside of one action and it's going to be one object. So it's a much simpler thing if you want to keep it inside of Unity inside of Blender. I said Unity. Inside of Blender, Blender, Blender. <laughs> so the difference though is uh, if you're going to bring that into Unity, I don't recommend using the armature method because uh, if uh, you're going to use bones in uh, Unity, it's going to be using uh, the skinned mesh renderer and uh, that's uh, quite performance intensive and you don't really want to waste performance on, on that one to have the bones affect the different building parts. So what I've done in our game is uh, that I've actually exported it as separate objects into one FBX file. And then I animated the same type of appearance here, but I used the Unity animator instead. I did all the animations inside of Unity. So it has a very similar type of a timeline with the dope sheet style, where you create keyframes and you keyframe the XYZ position inside of Unity. So I animated them inside there as Unity animations, and I kept the objects separate as we have here. So. I think that one's more performant, and uh, if you don't mind animating it inside of Unity, I prefer that method. A little bit quicker video this week, isn't it? So uh, not too much bonus material, but a little see-through, a little hint into the game development that we're making for uh, Line War and for the RTS game, and hopefully it gave you a little few tips and tricks to get you uh, along the way to model your own buildings. So until next video, take care, and I'll see you then. Bye for now.